All right, uh, welcome back. Steve Concioli is here today. He is, of course, uh, with the Orange County Fire Authority, Captain Steve. And Thanks, Ken, uh, for you us brought back along uh, someone new. You've just taken over uh, this position, uh, Christy Watson, Community Education Specialist. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Nice Actually, to have Christy's you been on. with us for a long time. She's just taken over the water safety oh, program. Oh, I see. Okay, which is important. Very important. Very important. In fact, uh, Steve was just saying that um, someone lost their life uh, just recently in Aliso Viejo by falling asleep in a spa. Right, so again, this year we've had 81 drowning calls and 36 fatalities. They're all preventable. And this last one was, it was a lady in her 50s that was in the spa, just mm -hmm. relaxing. The problem was she was by herself. So when, when uh, whatever happened that caused her to go under the water, we're, we're still unsure. Yeah. But there were some just good Samaritans on the third floor watching and they, they saw her down there and they just saw her kind of like, looked like she was getting tired and then just slip underneath the water. So they ran down as quick as they can from the third floor. They were able to pull her mm -hmm. out, but when they pulled her out, she was already in full arrest. So they started CPR right away. Our firefighter wow. paramedics got there quickly, f performed great life-saving measures on her, but unfortunately she died at the hospital later on. Christy, uh, one of the things that I know Steve has talked about before that we th when we think of drownings, we normally think of children, which of course uh, is an, an obvious. But what we forget about is here's somebody, uh, you'll find out what the cause is, but relatively young, 52. But the key is that they were in a spa, but they were by themselves. It doesn't matter how young or how old you are or how proficient of a swimmer you are. It's so important to make sure that you're always swimming with a buddy. Um, with children, we emphasize adult supervision, mm -hmm. um, but with adults and teenagers, high schoolers, and adults, it's you have to swim with a buddy. We never know when something's going to happen, whether it be an accident or some sort of emergency medical onset situation, mm -hmm. where if somebody's there, they're able to call 911, pull you from the, from the water so that it hopefully can prevent a drowning. I know one of the things that um, you folks do is uh, you have these tags kind of the water watcher uh, tags. And when you're in a situation, maybe a family situation, everybody's over for a summer barbecue and they have a pool there. It's like having a designated driver. You have a designated water watcher that will watch that the pool like a hawk for you know whatever length of time and they pass it off to someone else. And uh, when you have kids in the pool, that is really important, isn't it? Exactly, you said it perfectly, a designated driver, a designated individual to watch the water. It's so fast and so easy to become distracted, turn around and engage in a conversation, turn around, answer a text message, or just simply look away to grab something. And yeah. Just within those few seconds, that's when something can happen. And it's amazing, this year, the drownings have been up, am I right? Right. And so they're last, still ongoing. Right, yes. so last year we had 73 total drowning calls. This year we've already had 81, so it surpassed that and just one less fatality. Last year we had 37. We've already had 36 fatalities in Orange County. 17 of those fatalities have been people that are 50 or older. That's amazing. And again, the common denominator are adults alone in or around the water. Yeah, that is, that's, a, that's amazing. And it's sad mm -hmm. because it's really 100% preventable. Exactly. It is. Everybody thinks of a drowning being loud, splashing, they're going to hear somebody screaming. In reality, a drowning silent. They slip under the water and it's unnoticed. Yeah, I think um, just recently uh, I heard that in a water polo match, somebody went under the water, one of the kids, and was able to be uh, saved I right. think, by the coach. So yeah. here where you had an, uh, an expert swimmer yeah. uh, in high school, and uh, look what happened even there. Fortunately, there were you know a lot of people around, but still, they're playing water polo. It took them a, a little bit of time to notice that, but fortunately everything turned right. out our way. Well, and when people are around, they could save your life. Just like Monday evening at yeah. Lisa Miguel High School, there was a basketball player mm -hmm. during practice. He started not feeling well. He walked over to the sidelines and he collapsed right there. So when the coach immediately went up to him, he realized that he was having difficulty breathing and mm -hmm. then he stopped breathing. His heart had stopped. And so the coach immediately called 911 told the players to get another coach, which was practicing in the gym just next to it. There's mm -hmm. a small gym and a big mm -hmm. gym. 
and that coach ran over, grabbed an AED that was in there, mm -hmm. and was able to rip open his sh shirt, apply the AED, and then defibrillate him. They continued CPR for about two minutes, and then he was able to start slowly coming around. As soon as our paramedics arrived on scene, they started advanced life support measures, and they were able to get a pulse back and a blood pressure, and he was starting to talk to them before they left for the hospital. That's, yeah, which, great which is, news. Which is amazing. So it's the combination of somebody watching very closely to the water, and then people knowing CPR, knowing how to swim, and AEDs. These AEDs are mm -hmm. valuable. This AED saved life, and what was amazing was, in 2007, right here in Laguna Hills, there was a cross-country match. And Megan Myers, she was 14 years old, she was in this cross-country, huge invitational, and she went down. Unfortunately, there weren't any AEDs anywhere around, mm -hmm. and she died. So her mom started a foundation, and through this foundation, they donated 20 AEDs to Capital Strano Unified School District. And one of those AEDs saved this boy's life the other yeah. night. I mean, that is just amazing how it comes just full circle. That's great news. Yeah. It's so important to know your surroundings because once you walk in, if you're aware that there is an AED available, you are aware of the address and location of where you're at, in the event of a true emergency, you're able to call 911, relay that information to the dispatcher, getting the firefighters on scene sooner, and at the same time, you're able to utilize that AED. If somebody is drowning, knowing that there's safety equipment to get them out of the water and pull them out of the water to where you now, as a, as a rescuer, are not going to become a drowning victim as exactly. well. Exactly. You're able to utilize those tools to pull them out of the water. Exactly. Uh, some good news here we want to talk about, and uh, your, uh, your wonderful uh, fire authority, your dispatchers, helped with two births. And we got a couple different families here. We'll show the first one here. Right. So in a span of six days, our dispatchers and our firefighter paramedics helped deliver two babies. Um, the first one was in Irvine, the second one was in Wagon Wheel, and this was after a very tragic Halloween. We had mm -hmm. the worst Halloween in the history of Orange County where we had six That's people right. that were killed on Halloween night. So mm -hmm. Orange County needed this. I mean, the, the community was just struggling, and this just happened, this first one, this was in, in Irvine. Um, there was the mom, she was in her mid-30s, second child, and uh, she went into labor at home and the baby came extremely quick. So Michelle Richards did an outstanding job. Dad's an engineer, uh, he's got a great job and, and this is the first time that dad was nervous, but he said that Michelle was calm, walked him through every step possible just to deliver a healthy baby boy, and, or baby girl. And so uh, even the cord was wrapped around the baby's neck and she was able to walk him through carefully, removing the cord. And then mm -hmm. as soon as our firefighter paramedics arrived on scene, they quickly provided oxygen, stimulated the baby, wrapped the baby up, clamped the cord, and then they allowed dad to cut the cord. And then the baby started crying, and that was just, everybody was relieved. Oh, that and is then great. just six days later in Wagon Wheel in the evening, uh, the, 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 the other first, family, right, okay. uh, dad just ran out to get dinner. And so wow. he, he was only gone for a little bit of time. And during that time, the, the mom went into labor. Mm -hmm. And it was only 50, 50 minutes, which was amazing. Because she was in labor, she said, for 10 hours for, with the first one. Yeah. And so he came back in. The baby was coming. And so he quickly called 911. And then Colette, Colette Willock, one of our other dispatchers, was able to walk him through all the, the steps. And he was... He was delivering the baby when our firefighter paramedics came in, in the house. That's great. So two great stories. Both babies are doing real well. The older sisters, they, they each had an older sister, and they were so proud of dad and mom and their baby sisters. That is great. I mean, that's, you know, you want to hear stories right. like that. Uh, the next story we don't like to hear about, another kitchen fire that I think, uh, you know, and on the way here, uh, Steve said you got another call of a fourplex up in Tustin, again, a kitchen right. fire. So I, I've been up since 4.30 this morning uh, involved with this kitchen fire. So basically, not, not this one, a uh, fire in mm -hmm. Tustin where the, these are just simple fires. And, and what happens most often is something's left unattended mm -hmm. on the stove. And that's what happened here. And Christy's going to bring out a uh, pan and so forth. But in this, this call last month in Laguna Woods, 
the resident was was just warming up some oil, like it's mm -hmm. so common, and she just left and she started doing something else. What happened is the oil rapidly heats up, and if you're not watching it, can catch on fire and quickly, as you could see, it, it got out of control. So she ran and grabbed some water, the faucet. Well, as soon as you put water right. on a grease fire, it just quickly spreads. Well, unfortunately, it, it got on her, and so she was burned half of her body. Oh, gee. And uh, a neighbor came over. There was a garden hose outside the window, and he was able to spray some water on the fire. Our crews got there quickly, and it extinguished the fire. But it did significant damage to her, her yeah. unit, as well as, as she was burned. And she had to be transported to West Med Santa Ana and the, the burn center there. Um, so we never want to put water on no. a grease fire. So we'll have, have Christy. Christy has yeah, a couple. Yeah, show me what you have here. So what I have here is a pan and a lid. Prepare yourself mm -hmm. so that if there were to be an emergency, you're ready to um, act accordingly. If you experience a fire, turn off the stove. You're turning off the heat. Then, if it's safe to do so, grab the lid and slide it simply right up and over on top of the pan. Leave it there so that it's smothering the oxygen and it takes away the fire. The fire goes out. Now, what happens is a lot of people, they panic. They don't know what to do. They either throw water on the fire and the fire is now larger, or they grab the pan and try and run over to the sink and dump the fire out or the oil out into right. the sink. That can cause many issues. One, it can harm you where the oil is now going to land on your skin and you can become um, injured and burned or th spread the fire. So simple, turn off the stove, grab the lid, slide it up and over. Yeah, Simple as that. it really is. Remember, uh, whether it's salad dressing or a fire, <laughs> oil and water do not mix. Exactly. <laughs> and, and we the always basic principle of cooking. Right. And we always recommend an oven mitt close yes. by or a pot holder. That way, you have it, it protects you, mm -hmm. and you just put it. Basically, you know, this happens a lot with the fire, but mm -hmm. it just looks a lot worse if you just had an angle with the pot holder and the right. lid. Just slowly put it over. You'll smother out the fire, and the fire will go yeah. out. But what exactly. happened? Just like Christy said. She grabbed this and tried to, to move it, and then it spread. So basically, it caught all this on fire, it caught her, and then she tried to extinguish it. She, she had dropped it, she grabbed the water and the faucet, and it just, it just spread the fire. Well, with the holidays coming up, everybody's going to be cooking and enjoying family time. It's so easy, again, to become distracted and forget what you're cooking, or forget that you are cooking, and walk away. So just set yourself a little timer, remind yourself that you're cooking, and um, yeah. If you can. These are uh, very unique, and these are kind of patterned after the industrial ones you see in uh, restaurants. Exactly. If you can, buy um, some, sort of, some sort of safety device, whether it be a fire extinguisher or even these, um, which is the fire stop. They're little tiny canisters that they, they mount with a magnet, industrial um, strength magnet, right underneath your, um, your hood. And so upon direct flame impingement, it will open up and... That's extinguish great. the fire just dropping down the agent which is inside it's just a light powder and it drops down right on top and it smothers the fire and puts it right out that's that's good now it won't react to you're cooking something and you you know you're getting a little smoke which is going to be natural it's got to be a direct flame that hits it and you just put that in the middle of your hood or something like that correct yes yeah right. all right speaking of the holidays we want to get to something that you guys are involved in every year and um, if okay, anybody, oh, okay, can I just yeah. mention one thing? Sure. Also here, we just want to make sure on your cook range, you have it clear around. Right. So basically, too often on these fires, mm -hmm. we have towels or exactly. the pot holder or um, paper towels. Around there, and that's what happened here. The fire was spread because there was other combustibles around there. So keep it clear. So if you're cooking something, have the pans and the stove on the stove, top of the stove and the range top. But, don't have anything combustible around there. We have one cooking fire every three days in Orange County. Yeah, that's amazing. And again, 100% preventable. And last year in November, we had 21 in the month of November. Wow. 17 in the month of December. That, that, these are all responses by the fire department where we sent fire engines and fire trucks and battalion chiefs and paramedic units to the scene because yeah. of, of these fires. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And don't deep fry your turkey. It might taste good, <laughs> but don't do it. All right, um, we, uh, every year, you guys get involved with Spark a Love campaign and uh, where you guys collect toys. We, we see this, uh, I know uh, Channel 7 is big on this. They bring their buses around and collect. And if people want to help out, this is collecting toys, sporting equipment, things like that, right? 
Right, so every year we partner with KBC mm -hmm. for Spark of Love. It's all Southern California firefighters. And then at every fire station, if you want to deliver toys, you could bring an unwrapped mm -hmm. new toy, gift cards, sporting good equipment to the fire station. We'll collect it. And then we have trucks that come by the fire station, pick them up, and we bring them to a warehouse. And you could explain some more about that. Yeah. Too. So the toy collaborated um, collaboration, we work with St. De Vincent de Paul as well as the um, the. Uh, which is Toys for Tots mm -hmm. for the Marine Corps as well. And so there's a various um, bunch of groups that come together. And so we all collect the toys, we bring them over to the warehouse, and we ask that people, if they can, to try and donate toys earlier. The earlier, the better, the more That's chance true. we have to go ahead and sort through the toys, put them in age appropriate categories, and then go ahead and release them to the families who are in need. We do provide toys to up to 300 families within Orange County. That's great. Yes. That is good. So again, uh, you can go right down to Station 22 here and uh, drop something off. Uh, it's, it's a great program and uh, throughout Southern California, it's obviously done. And you guys do a great job with that in conjunction with the Marines and St. Vincent de Paul and uh, KBC. It's great. Steve wants a little toy fire truck. Yes. So maybe <laughs> yes. One of those. Uh, all right. Uh, I want to thank you both for coming on. Nice to meet you. And I know we'll see you again. Thank you very much. And thank Steve, you good me. to see you. Thank you, Ken. Both have a good um, Thanksgiving. A safe one, of course. Happy Thanksgiving. Pay, pay attention to what you cook, right? Yes. All right. Very good. Good to see you. All right, folks, we're out of time, so you have a good day.